Hey, Algebra 2 and Honors Algebra 2 students. Um, I'm going through notes on section 2.4, and we are on page 42 of your student journal. All right, um, I just give a bunch of stuff on this um, just because I wanted to get through some examples. I think it'd be easier to kind of walk through some examples than it would be just to kind of go through all the beginning stuff. So um, we are on kind of the extra practice page, which basically I'm going to pick a couple problems and kind of walk you through them. And then I made up an example of my own, so you may want to grab some paper just so that you can um, write down this extra example. All right, so first of all, I'm going to go over question one. So in this question, it asks you to write the parabola in vertex form. So I'm just going to do the work over, well, I'll do it right here. So vertex form is uh, y equals a and then x minus h quantity squared plus k. So the first thing you want to do is to sure that you plug in your vertex for this function. So if you look at your graph, the vertex is actually labeled down here, so it's 2 and negative 2. So I'm going to plug in 2 for h and negative 2 in for k, and so that's what it would look like. In order for us to go ahead and finish writing this equation, we're going to need to be able to find the a value. The easiest way to do this um, is to take one of these points, so a point that the function already passes through, and if they give you a labeled point, use that one just because you know that one's going to be accurate. And so I'm going to go ahead and take this point, the point 4, 6, plug it in for x and y into my equation, and I'm going to solve for a. So I plugged in 6 for y and 4 for a. So I would get 4 minus 2 is 2, and 2 squared is 4. And I'm going to solve for a, so I'm going to add 2 to both sides, and then divide by 4. I get a to equal 2. All right, once you solve for a, you can finish writing your answer. So my final answer would be y equals my a value, and then you put in your h and your k as well. And this would be the equation that you're looking for. And so that's how you'd find the equation of a line, given a graph, um, or if you were just given a vertex and a point, like numbers three and four give you a vertex and another point, and it's done the exact same way. Um, just kind of double check that, okay, my A value is positive, therefore my parabola is pointing up, you know, uh, my, my vertex is two, negative two, and that kind of matches what I have in my equation, so things look pretty accurate on my part. All right, I want to show you how to do another one in intercept form. So we're going to skip down to question number five. So in this section, so all the ones in, you know, questions one through four, I encourage you to go back and do the rest of those problems. And I'm just going to do one example for each section. So that way you guys can, um, you know, have a model to be able to kind of do the other ones. All right, so this one, there's a couple things I noticed. We're going to use intercept form which is that a and then x minus p and then x minus q. And so the p and the q stand for your two x-intercepts, which on our function are negative 4 and 6. So I'm going to do um, x plus 4 and x minus 6. You have to be careful that when you solve this equation, like when I solve x plus 4, it has to produce the x-intercept of negative 4. So that's why I made this x plus 4. Because when I set this equal to 0 and solve, I would get x equals negative 4, which is what my x-intercept is. Likewise, for this one, if I solved x minus 6 equals 0, I would get x to equal positive 6, which is what my x-intercept is. Once you put your x-intercepts in there, um, to be honest with you, uh, there's not a whole lot else you need to do other than kind of like the same process that we just did with the above problem. You're going to find another point that's on your graph, and so in this case we have the point 125. You're going to plug in 25 for y, 1 in for x, and you're gonna solve for a. So I get 25 equals negative 25a. So that means a equals negative 1. So to write your final answer, you would put it in, again, intercept form. Which you're going to leave it in intercept form. So you do negative 1 or just negative out front. And then you'd have x plus 4 and x minus 6. So this would be your equation in intercept form. So um, this, here's another example. Okay, so pay attention to see how my a value is negative. That's because my parabola is pointing down. And again, I have to make sure that if I solved these two, I would get x-intercepts of negative 4 and 6. And I do. 
So you can try number six, which is very similar. Um, seven and eight just don't give you a graph. They just tell you what the x-intercepts are, but it's done the same way. All right, what I'm gonna ask that you do, and you may wanna pause your video and write this down. I'm gonna have you, we're gonna go through an equation. This one's gonna be a little bit more elaborate. So if you, if you, you're gonna need some space to write. Um, anyways, so for this problem, we're gonna be putting our equation in standard form. So it's gonna take a little bit more effort and it's also going to take a lot more paper. <laughs> so give you a second to, to write this down. So basically this is an example of writing a quadratic equation using three different points. So again, we're just given three different points and we're gonna write the equation in standard form. So if you remember, standard form looks like this. So this is standard form. We have ax squared plus bx plus c. So ultimately what we're gonna do is we're gonna um, solve for a, b, and c. In order for us to write this final equation, I need to have numbers in here for a, b, and c. So in order to do that, what we do is we pick any three points. So whether I give you a table like I'm doing here and you can pick off any three points, whether you have a graph and you can find three points, um, or whether you actually just are given three points of your equation, what you're gonna do is you're actually gonna set up a system of equations. And I'll show you how to do that. So let's pick the first point, one in 19.1. So this means our T value, which in this case represents X. So this is like our X and then our height, which is representing kind of our Y value. So for the first one, we're gonna use our equation. So I'm gonna kind of change it a little bit. I'm gonna use it in function notation. So what I mean by that is I'm gonna make it a function between H and T, so time and height. So it's the same exact equation as this, except I have X's and Y's, I'm gonna use T's and H's. So now um, I'm gonna plug one in for T and 19.1 in for H. So I'm gonna get 19.1 equals a times one squared plus b times one plus c. Okay, so this is one equation right here. So now that I've got one equation, I'm gonna do the exact same thing with two other different points. So if I pick, I'm just gonna pick the next point so I'm gonna get, um, let's see here, I'm gonna get y value is 20.4, a times t squared. t in this case is two, so two squared is four, and then two, two, two times b plus c. So this is my second equation. And while I'm here, I'm just gonna pick the next point. Again, doesn't really matter which one I pick. I'll just pick the third one. I'm gonna plug in three for t, so three squared is nine. And then I'm going to plug in 3 for t, so b times 3 is 3b plus c. So now I have, I'm just going to rewrite this equation over here as well, so I can have them all in the same spot. So now what I did is I used all three of those points and came up with a system of three equations. This may sound familiar because we've done this before. Now what we're going to do is we're going to actually solve this equation. Um, so what I did first is I actually took, um, let's see here, I took the top two equations here and I'm going to put them together and I'm going to cancel out my C's. So I'm gonna use these two equations right here. I'm actually gonna multiply one of my equations by negative one. And the reason I did this is so that um, my C's would end up canceling out. So I'm gonna multiply this whole equation by negative one. So I would get negative 20.4 equals negative 4a minus 2b minus c. And then if I use the second equation, I'm just gonna use 19.9 equals 9a plus 3b plus c. So by multiplying that by negative one, you can see that my c values are gonna cancel out. So I should get, let's see here, negative 0.5 equals 5a plus b. So this is an equation I'm going to kind of hold on to for a second. Now, since I used equations one and two and got rid of c, I need to use equations, I'm gonna use equation two and three and do the same exact thing and get rid of c. So I am going to um, go ahead and I'll make, it doesn't really matter, but I'll make this one negative. So I'll multiply this equation by negative one. 
So I have, let me use a different colored pen here. I will have 19.9 um, equals 9A plus 3B plus C. That's a bit pen. And then if I multiply the, the bottom of the third equation by negative 1, I have negative 19.1 equals negative A minus B minus C. And when I add those together, I get 0 0.8 equals 8A plus 2B, and then my C's cancel out. So now I have these two equations. So again, the, now what I'm gonna do is now that I have these two equations, um, I can use these two and either solve for A or solve for B. So I'm gonna rewrite them over here just because it makes it easier for me. So 5a plus b equals negative 0.5, and then I have 8a plus 2b equals 0 0.8. All right, so now um, I am going to go ahead and get rid of either my a's or my b's. For me, it would be a lot easier if I multiplied this top equation by negative two, it would be a lot easier to get rid of my b's, and so that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna get negative 10a, minus 2b, a negative times a negative is a positive, and I get one. I'm gonna add it to my bottom equation. Whoops, this should say 8a here. Um, 8a plus 2b equals 0 0.0, or 0.8. So now I can add those two together, and I get negative 2a, the b's would cancel out, I get 1.8, and then if I divide, I get a to equal point, negative 0.9. So this is important. This is the first piece of the puzzle that we solved. And so what I know here is if I go all the way back up to the top, I know that my a value is negative 0.9. And so I can substitute that in. Now I just need to solve for b and c, and I'm good to go. So you can decide where you want to plug this in back in at. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and plug this back into one of my equations. And so I'm gonna go ahead and plug negative 0.9 into this top equation here and solve for B. So I would get five times negative 0.9 plus B equals negative 0.5. Five times negative 0.9 is negative 4.5 plus B equals negative 0.5. And then if I add 4.5 to both sides, I get B to equal 4. All right, so now I can plug in the 4 back up here. And the last thing I need is my C value. And so I ran out of some room here. I'm just going to grab another sheet of paper. All I need now is to go back to one of my original equations, so one of the three that I started with. So I'll do the 19.1 equals... A plus B plus C. And since I know what A and B are, I can plug those in. So A was negative 0.9. Um, B was positive 4. And so now all I can do is um, go ahead and plug that in and um, solve for C. Okay, so I'll get 19.1 equals 3.1 plus C. And then subtract 3.1 from both sides, I get C to equal 16. All right, as you can see, this process is a lot more evolved than the other two, um, especially if one of your points, if you're not given like a y-intercept, if you were given a y-intercept, the system would be a lot easier because then if you remember, the y-intercept of an equation in standard form is just your c-value. So in other words, you'd be told what your c-value is. So the only thing you'd have to find was a and b. But if you noticed on my graph or on my table here, I didn't give you a y-intercept because there's no um, when t was zero. So you had to go ahead and set up a system, kind of do it the long way. This is a more complicated version. And so um, I wanted to go through one that was a little more complicated than, than try to go through one um, that make you try to do that one on your own. Okay, we will definitely need to practice that one again, but that's kind of pulling in some of the things we talked about in um, our last class, our last couple classes. All right, we are on page 43, page 43. 
All right, I'm not gonna go through everything on this list again. Um, I'm gonna kind of save some of it for you guys to kind of work through. But I wanted to show you a couple, um, uh, uh, one, I wanna go through like nine through 11 specifically, because I wanted to show you how you can identify a, from a table whether a function is linear, quadratic, or neither. So the neither is kind of obviously a catch-all, right? So um, if it's not linear, it's not quadratic, then I guess the only other classification it can be is neither in this case. Um, so what you want to do is you want to do something called find your differences, your first differences and your second differences. So what I mean by that is, if you notice um, in all of these, x is increasing by 1. So in this case, all of these have a constant rate. x is increasing by a constant rate. That's good. That's what we want to see. Um, in the next ones, what we want to look for, we want to figure out what the difference is between each of the values. So remember, if it's linear, you should have a constant rate. Like it should be all adding by 10 or subtracting by 2.9 or whatever it is every single time. So to do this, all you're going to do is take that. So if you're looking at 424 and 416, take 416 and subtract 424, you should get negative 8. Then you go to the next set. 376 minus 416, I get negative 60. Clearly, this is not linear because you already know that this is those are two different values. 304 minus 376, I get negative 72. 200 minus 304, I get negative 104. 64 minus 200, I get negative 136. Okay, we call this our first difference. If your first differences are the same value, so, you know, then you know it's linear. If the second differences are all the same value, then you know it's quadratic. And this is what I mean by that. So now do this again. Now you have negative 8, negative 60, negative 72, negative 104, negative 136. So do the differences again. Negative 60 minus negative 8 gives me, um, Oh, that's not negative 60. I misread my own writing. That's negative 40. Sorry. Negative 40 minus negative 8 gives me negative 32. And um, I have negative 72 to minus negative 40. A negative 32. Negative 104 minus 70. Negative 72 gives me negative 32. Negative 136 minus negative 104 gives me negative 32. These are what we call our second differences. So when your second differences are the same, that's how you know this is a quadratic relationship. So you would say this is quadratic. So you know that you can write a quadratic function for that particular table. So this is just an easy way to be able to tell whether you're, you have a linear or quadratic relationship just from looking at your table. Let's do numbers 10 and 11. So on this one, you can see that your x's are increasing by 3 each time, which is good. And then you will notice real quickly that your y values are decreasing by 6. In other words, your first differences are negative 6. So when your first differences are all the same, that's linear. And then the last example you're probably going to guess as to what the answer is going to be, seeing as how that it's um, the only one left is neither. So again, notice your x's are increasing by the same amount each time. Your y's, um, I'm going to get 10. Here, this is 30, this is 90, 270, um, 810. Hmm. That's my first differences. Clearly, they're not the same. The second difference is I get 20, 60, and I can actually stop here because if my first differences aren't the same and my second differences aren't the same, um, there's no need to go on any further it's going to be neither. So that's one way of telling whether or not you have a quadratic or a linear relationship just from looking at a table. So they're called the second and first differences. All right, I would encourage you to practice some of this stuff. You can finish the rest of this page if you'd like to see kind of how that's going and then um, come back to us with any questions. All right, you guys have a great rest of the day. Bye.